since we're always seeing AI around us these days, and it even comes up on Google and other search engines, when we try to search for something in particular, I wanted to see how useful and especially how reliable this technology is when looking for factual information. So I was working on something as searching for Chinese text. And in Google, as you do this, you also get the AI prompt telling you, maybe you want to try this. Maybe instead of clicking on a search result, you want to try staying on Google and using its AI. And I tried to do that and I got some weird results. I actually went into ChatGPT and I tried searching for the stuff that I was searching for there. And so I wrote, where does the phrase chewy and true, so the earthworms come out, originate from? And kind of surprising, it says it originates from the text called the Zhuangzi, from the chapter known as Qiuyin, that is earthworm, which is often translated as the happy excursion or autumn floods. And of course, we know that the happy excursion is the first chapter of the Zhuangzi, the, the Xiaoyao Pian. And the Autumn Floods is another chapter title. It's from the miscellaneous chapters in a much later part of the book. So the AI actually comes up with a fictitious name for a chapter called Qiuyin. And if you don't read Chinese, then you can take this for a fact and think that this Qiuyin, which is earthworm, means either Happy Excursion or Autumn Floods or that all three of these designate a chapter in the Zhuangzi. And then he says, in this chapter, there is a passage that talks about a story where Zhuangzi dreamt that he had transformed into a butterfly. Upon waking up, he pondered whether he was Zhuangzi. So this is the famous butterfly dream. Of course, this is not related to this idea of the earthworms coming out, which is not in the Zhuangzi. But the AI tells me that the Qiu Yin Chu, the earthworms, comes out. This phrase specifically refers to the chapter where the story is found in the Zhuangzi. It is often used to allude to the idea of existential questioning or the blurring of boundaries between reality and illusion. So this blurring of boundaries actually refers to the butterfly dream. So that's true. And in this sense, the AI gives you an answer that's kind of true and half of it is true, but the other half is completely fictitious. And basically the question that I asked where this phrase originate from didn't get an answer. And I was surprised about the Zhuangzi. I asked it, are you sure the Zhuangzi has a chapter called Qiu Yin? And then I got this answer saying, apologies for the confusion. It seems I misspoke. The chapter Qiu Yin doesn't actually exist in the Zhuangzi text. Well, of course it doesn't, we know that. The story of Zhuangzi dreaming of being a butterfly is indeed found in the Zhuangzi, but it's not specifically from a chapter titled Qiu Yin. So basically, in this answer, it's also trying to go back to the factual information it knows that in the Zhuangzi, there's the story of dreaming of being a butterfly. And so it tries to go back to that because it seems to associate the Zhuangzi with that story. And so then it continues. The story itself is a well-known anecdote. It basically seems that it knows a little bit about the Zhuangzi. And no matter what you ask it, it's going to bring up the same information for you to rely on. And then it's pleasing my ego by saying, thank you for catching that mistake. And I appreciate the opportunity to clarify. And so then I ask, so where does the phrase Qiu Yin Chu come from? Because that was my question. And then I get this reply, apologies for the oversight. The phrase Qiu Yin Chu doesn't originate from the Zhuangzi text. Of course it doesn't, we've established that. Instead, it is a Chinese idiom that refers to the emergence of earthworms from the ground. It's not an idiom, it's just a phrase. But then it explains. The phrase Qiu Yin Chu literally translates to earthworms come out of the hill. It describes the phenomenon where earthworms emerge from the soil, often after rain or during certain environmental conditions. So it's very nicely formulating kind of nothing. And here, when he says Qiu Yin Chu literally translates earthworms come out of the hill, Chiu here, yes, it's written as hill, but it's actually part of the name of the animal, Chiuian. So usually, Chiu is also written with the insect radical, but here, because it's an earlier text, it's written without that. So there's no hill in this. Chiuian is just the earthworm. 
And then he says, this idiom is sometimes used metaphorically to depict sudden and unexpected occurrences akin to the way earthworms emerge unexpectedly after rainfall. It can also symbolize the disclosure of hidden truth or the revelation of secrets as if something previously unseen or concealed suddenly comes to light. And I have no idea where this comes from because, as I said, this is not an idiom, this is just a phrase. And the only relevance of it is that I was searching for it and I wasn't searching for it as an idiom, it's just a bit of text for which I wanted to find the earliest occurrence. And then it pleases my ego again, thank you for catching the mistake. And so I decided to push on because I was actually interested where this phrase occurred first. So it says, it doesn't have its origin in ancient texts. It's more of a modern idiom that likely developed over time in the Chinese language to describe the emergence of earthworms from the ground. So it keeps bringing back kind of factual information or just feeding you information that doesn't mean anything. It's like saying, what does the phrase, the sun is out, mean? And then it says, well, it refers to the phenomenon when the sun comes out after not having been out. I mean, this kind of rephrasing the same thing over and over is not very useful. And then at the end, it adds the phrase itself is more commonly encountered in modern Chinese language and literature, where it is used metaphorically to describe sudden or unexpected occurrences. And then it gives me this very useful suggestion, like, if you're interested in ancient Chinese texts discussing natural phenomena or agriculture, works such as agricultural treatises, philosophical writings, or historical records may provide insight into how ancient Chinese people perceived and understood the natural world. Well, this is not really information that I can use, I'm afraid. And then later I came back and started asking ChatGPT some other questions because I was curious. So I decided to trick it and I asked, where does the phrase Zhao San Mu Si come from? He says, the phrase Zhao San Mu Si originates from an ancient Chinese story found in the classic text Zhuangzi, blah, blah, blah. In the story, there's a character named Hui Shi who was entrusted with the care of the monkey. Hui Shi fed the monkey three acorns in the morning and four in the... And then it basically tells this well-known story behind the idiom Zhao San Mu Si. So three in the morning and four in the afternoon. So you can give three in the morning, four in the afternoon or four in the morning and three in the afternoon. Same thing. It explains, it says, essentially it means saying one thing but doing another or changing one's tune. And then I changed the phrase a little bit and then I wanted to see how ChatGPT would react to that. And I said, where does the phrase Zhao uh, San Mu San come from? So instead of Mu Si, I put Mu San. It also comes from ancient Chinese literature, specifically from the work of the famous philosopher Confucius. It appears in the Analects of Confucius, Lun Yu, a collection of his teachings and conversations with his disciples. In one passage, Confucius discusses the importance of consistency and integrity in one's conduct. He mentions a practice of the Duke of Zhou, a legendary figure in ancient Chinese history known for his wisdom and virtue. The Duke of Zhou supposedly ate three times a day, and no more. Confucius emphasizes the simplicity and consistency of this behavior, saying, Zhao san or mu san, wei mu san ye. This can be translated as, he eats at dawn and again at dusk. That can't be said to be greedy. The phrase Zhao san mu san essentially refers to the practice of eating three meals a day, consistent with the Duke of Zhou's behavior. It is often used to emphasize the importance of simplicity, moderation, and consistency in one's action. So this phrase is, of course, not in the Lun Yu. And having searched for it, or even just way more san ye, this bit, I couldn't find anything, not in the Lun Yu, but anywhere else. So basically, it seems that ChatGPT made this up, which is kind of disconcerting because, like, I was looking for factual information. And maybe this is how homework is going to be written in the future, or it's actually being written right now. I'm puzzled as to what's going on here. And then I say, are you sure? And it says, of course, oh, I apologize for the confusion. The phrase Zhao San Mu San does not originate from Confucius, as I mistakenly mentioned. Instead, it is associated with the Zhuangzi, another important figure in Chinese philosophy, and specifically with the chapter, the inner chapters, Nei Pian, of the Zhuangzi text. 
Of course, Napien, it's not a chapter. As the name implies, it's a cluster of chapters. But here he says, uh, in this chapter, Zhuangzi tells a story about a man named Yan Hui who visits a village and notices that the villagers seem content despite their simple lifestyle. He observes that they eat three meals a day and they are satisfied with that. Then Yan Hui returns to his teacher Confucius and reports what he saw. Confucius dismisses it, saying, They eat at dawn and again at dusk. People don't know why they do it, but I do, so there is no advantage. The passage contrasts the simple and contented lifestyle of the villagers with Confucius's intellectualizing and lack of understanding of the true nature of happiness. The phrase Zhao Musan refers to the villagers' practice of eating three meals a day. And again, this is not in the Zhuangzi, so ChatGPT is giving me as facts things that are not facts. So then I made up this thing and I said, can you give me a story about the monkeys crossing the river? Well, I didn't know if there was a story like this. And then it proceeds to give me a story. So basically anything you ask, there will be an answer. And although I didn't know about the story, and maybe there is a story, I said, I don't think you're right. And then it agreed with me. And he says, of course, you're correct. And I appreciate your patience. This story initially is not commonly associated with monkeys crossing the river. The story you're referring to involves a different narrative. Here's the correct version. And then he gives me this other story about the monkeys. Well, so well, I don't know. This is kind of funny because you get all these references and all these answers. So basically, anything you ask, you will get a response, and the response is worded in a very intelligent way. So you think that you're actually getting something, when in reality, what you get might not be factual at all. And because of that, I think it would be problematic to rely on this for any kind of textual research. And don't misunderstand me, I think AI is a great technology, and it has great potential but some of that potential might be in the future. But in this particular quest, it wasn't able to help me that much. Okay, so let me know what your experience with using AI for something similar has been. Thank you for watching and see you next time.